Okay, hello everyone. Uh, good morning. Uh, today is the uh, Visakha day. Uh, Visakha day of Southern Buddhism, especially in Thailand. So uh, this morning, I got uh, many uh, letters uh, from my friend in Thailand. Uh, they said to me, "Happy, happy Visakha, happy Visakha, Visakha." Uh, uh, how can I say? Uh, where is my notepad? <laughs> Visaka uh, is usually name of the month. Uh, so in the Southeast Asia, uh, the first month of the year is usually uh, late uh, April or May. So uh, this time uh, around the Southeast Asia uh, uh, is the start of New Year's Day. The, Start of New Year Day. So New Year Day in uh, Thailand uh, was Songkran. Uh, Songkran. Songkran. Uh, is it Songkran? <laughs> we usually call it Songkran. Uh, it's a New Year Day. Uh, and then uh, Songkran uh, tended to be followed by Visaka. We Visaka. Visaka. Visaka is a Thai uh, variant of a Pali Vesak. Uh, we usually call it Vesak. Vesak is the name of the month. Name of the month. So Vesak means the first month in the year. So usually uh, in between uh the middle of uh april to uh may uh something like that something like that so uh you know in the old days uh india or, 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 or southeast asia they all use a lunar calendar uh, not the solar calendar like uh you know nowadays we are using so the exact day is changing. The exact day is changing. And according to the tradition, uh, some uh, said uh, Vesaka is at the first week of the uh, of the Vesak. Or some said, uh, you know, Ves uh, you know, uh, Buddhist celebration should be at the last week of the Vesak. So people fight each other. So in Korea, uh, uh, you you may remember uh, the thirtieth of April, April is Buddha's birthday. <laughs> uh, it's a national holiday in Korea, uh, but uh, this year uh, in Thailand, uh, uh, Buddha's birthday is going to be uh, uh, six. Oh, but May, yeah, six of May. So they are different. They are different uh, according to how to decide. Uh, but one thing very different from Thailand is that uh, they said uh, it's a triple. Uh, triple celebration uh, during the Visakha because the Buddha. Was born. Uh, at Visaka, the Buddha uh, become awakened uh, during the Visaka. The Buddha finally uh, uh, enter entering into Nirvana <laughs> during the Visaka. Vesak. So, uh, according to the Southern Buddhist tradition, this is a, a celebration of the three, not just one, not just the Buddha's birthday. Uh, it's a celebration of Buddha's birth, Buddha's awakening, and Buddha's entering into the final moment, the final nirvana. So, uh, this is a triple celebration, I have to say. <laughs> so, today is a very auspicious day. <laughs> so. Uh, tonight I have to give a talk uh, 
not usually uh, during this time I'll be in Bangkok uh, to do a UN Day of Vesak celebration, but this year uh, the uh, celebration was cancelled due to uh, a COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic. Uh, so we are going to have a short, uh, you know, internet-based uh, celebration. So they asked me to give a talk uh, during the celebration. So I said I I'm okay, <laughs> but uh, it's nine o'clock. I have to give a talk, so I don't know how to do it. Uh, anyway, uh, that's the visa card. So uh, if you are in, uh, if you near your village, if there is any Buddhist temple, please visit and uh, have a, a, a bow to the Buddha. Uh, welcome to the human world. <laughs> Because today uh, we're supposed to do that. Uh, uh, but Korean uh, celebration uh, postponed uh, to uh, sometime in the in the May, uh, late May, I think. Uh, so we have uh, another occasion where we can celebrate uh, the birthday of the Buddha. So uh, we can do it. Uh, we can do it anyway. But uh, you should remember today is a Southern Buddhist uh, Southern Buddhist uh, uh, Buddha's birthday uh, called Vesak or in Thai Visaka. Uh, so, as I said to you, uh, the Buddha become awakened during the time of the Visaka. So, uh, maybe this is another uh, meritorious thing we are studying on how he become uh, awakened. <laughs> you know, so uh, let's. Uh, get into uh, the Buddhist uh, way to talk about uh, Visaka uh, and, and so on. So uh, I think uh, yesterday, uh, no, no, Monday, I was talking about the goal of Buddhism and how to reach there, how to reach there. So according to the Tillman Petter, there are three ways. And I put the title in, in each of them, the way of asceticism, the way of wisdom, the way of meditation, one by one. And uh, I just explained briefly, the way of asceticism is more like giants. <laughs> and the way of wisdom is using uh, the uh, knowledge of uh, a triple marks of a phenomenal world, anicca, dukkha, anatta, uh, through which uh, we see the world we get the idea of how the world is changing and, and, and so on. And the third one, using a mild meditation as a key to calm down our mind. And we should make a good foundation through which the real knowledge can work for removing our all, uh, you know, uh, attachment and desire. So the goal of Buddhism, uh, is to remove all the attachment and desire inside of us. If we remove everything, uh, there is there is no more reason why we should reborn again in this uh, you know painful world. So we will be uh, nirvanized, or we will be uh, you know uh, uh, we 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 can say bye bye <laughs> to this endless uh, you know. Uh, world of uh, suffering. Uh, that's the uh, main idea of Buddhism. So uh, today I'd like to uh, talk about the way of asceticism. Uh, asceticism. So, uh, where is it? So the way of asceticism, uh, we can uh, say, reaching awakening experience through gradual practice of nine successive meditations, then achieving completion of a cessation of more all mental activities. So uh, Monday I said to you that uh, this method, we try empty our head, empty our head. Uh, so uh, empty our head means there is nothing in here, no more thinking, no more mind, no more mental uh, activities, just a push, something like that. So uh, early uh, European scholars, 
who study uh, Buddhism, and especially when they look at this Niroda Samapati, they usually said that with the uh, meditation called the Niroda Samapati, Buddhism met mysticism. Mysticism means we cannot explain <laughs> something happening there, but we cannot explain. So, uh, you know, the aim of uh, uh, this method, way of asceticism, to reach uh, the place where there is no more mental activities and something happening. <laughs> uh, maybe uh, some Buddhists say the supernatural power occur during uh, the time when we reach uh, Niroda Samapati. Uh, sometimes uh, during the Niroda Samapati, we touch the Absolute. Oh, during the Niroda Samapati, we become, uh, you know, equated with the Absolute, something. There are so many explanations, but uh, I can't say uh, to you that uh, this is exactly uh, what it is, because <laughs> Uh, this is an area of mysticism. So, in order to understand, in order to understand uh, Niroda Samapati, and so on, we need uh, nine successive meditation in Buddhism. Nine successive meditation in Buddhism. So, uh, if you are interested in uh, Buddhist meditation, uh, people are talking about uh, in Korean, Ku uh, Chajejong. Uh, successive meditation uh, uh, and and this uh, successive meditation is a gradual gradual step gradual uh, nine steps nine steps gradual nine steps this has got this meditation has got gradual my nine step so if i may uh, uh draw the line so first the meditation and enter into second enter the third and the, the fourth and the six seven eight nine so this is among the most important one uh, called the niroda samapati uh, so so this is normal mental state, uh, we are elaborating a nine successive way, successive way to go on the top. And according to the Buddhism, uh, this is this nine successive meditation look like this. Look like this. Uh, uh, this is a bit technical. <laughs> Might be boring, but uh, you should remember. Uh, the first step was called the first meditation. And if we finish a first meditation, we are going up to the second meditation. And from the med second meditation, we can go up to the third. And from the uh, third meditation, we go up to the post meditation. And then from the post, uh, we go up to the uh, pips meditation. But the pips meditation different uh, a title, sphere of infinite space. Infinite space. And from here, if we're going up, uh, we are reaching infinite consciousness. Uh, and from uh, infinite consciousness, we are going up to the nothingness. From the nothingness, we enter into neither conception. No uh, non conception. Neither concept, uh, neither concept, no concept, no non concept. And from there, uh, we go up, uh, we are reaching the completion of cessation.
completion of cessation. So this is a uh, nine steps. But in Buddhism, we usually say this poor belongs to the world of the poem, and this poor belongs to a uh, world of uh, uh, non uh, formula, non formula, and this is the top of the meditation. Uh, we usually say. So uh, uh, you may feel uh, a bit peculiar, <laughs> but uh, I have to say uh, completion of cessation. Uh, can I can I show you everything? Uh, 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 but uh, you may remember uh, when the Buddha uh, he did the uh, hush hush. Uh, asceticism, and then uh, Lady Sujata appear and offering the food, and Buddha accepted. So at that very moment, he thought, life is very painful. The asceticism I practiced uh, for almost six years gave me very hard, hard time. Uh, but I couldn't achieve anything. So at that very moment, Buddha just remember it's a happy moment when he had a spontaneous meditation during the plowing festival when he was first out from the palace. So in the Majjhima Nikaya uh, of early Buddhist canon, the Buddha remember, you know, before I decided to do the middle path, uh, Majjhima Patipada, I remember when I was very young, uh, I was out of the palace with my father, enjoying plowing past festival. And uh, during the festival, spontaneously, uh, he had a very nice meditation experience, which gave him very happy. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a very happy and joyful experience, not that a uh, hush, hush meditation. So suddenly the Buddha... Uh, Remember, uh, this one, uh, he was uh, lying down, <laughs> lying down, uh, and, and this one, he was just uh, sitting there, sitting there. So the remembrance of the first meditation is very important, a kind of a new step uh, for the Buddha entering into the Buddhism. So according to the Buddhism, uh, during the first meditation, we have, uh, uh, how can I say, uh, Discussive thought and uh, and fine uh, thinking. We have uh, discussive thought and fine thinking, and joy and happiness. Uh, so in the normal uh, state. Uh, so we are like a normal state. We are hindered by our sensation. We are hindered by our sensation. We are hindered by our uh, egoness. We are hindered by, uh, you know, uh, by, by self-sufficient feeling and so on. We cannot into the uh, meditation, meditative state. So we have uh, five hindrances uh, during uh, the normal state through which we cannot enter into the first meditation. But if we are uh, succeeded in entering into first meditation, we have a discussive thought and fine thinking and joy and happiness. So this is a big difference. You know, uh, asceticism, ascetic tradition in India, they put pain on our body. Uh, you know, as much pain as we can, uh, our mind become very clear, <laughs> very refined. Uh, how can I say? But Buddhist meditation is different. Uh, you know, uh, in Buddhist meditation, we can have a, a feeling of joy and happiness as a start. So uh, this is middle path, I have to say. So, um, you know, uh, I have a. Uh, some experience. I didn't say I was entering into the first meditation, but uh, I, when I was second year elementary school, 
uh, elementary school student. I think uh, 10 years old. <laughs> uh, my father. Uh, my father uh, was a neuropsychological doctor. And he practiced Buddhism. And when I was second year elementary school student, uh, one day my father said, our family uh, is going to do a family meditation. <laughs> uh, our family is going to do family meditation uh, in, uh, in one day, uh, once in a week, uh, in, in every month. In, in for, for two or three months, I think, uh, he keep carrying on he was to keep carrying on so what he did uh, my father uh, uh, did was very nice <laughs> my father uh, during that during that time uh, our house my house has got very nice uh, you know living room uh, uh, he uh, th there was uh, two doors and uh, one two three four windows so he uh, Use the curtain and he closed all the windows and he locked the door. Uh, and we, uh, our family, my father, my mother, uh, my elder sister, and me, and younger sister, we are all five. <laughs> so I was second year undergraduate, uh, no, no, elementary school student. My elder sister, uh, kindergarten, <laughs> my uh, elder sister, uh, you know. Uh, third or fourth year in elementary school. So what my father did, uh, we just uh, sitting there and just, uh, uh, you know, have a breathing in and out and breathing in and out. And 20 minutes, he just uh, turned off the light. <laughs> no more light. No light. <laughs> it become, how can I think? dark suddenly it become very dark <laughs> you know all pipe sitting there but he turned off the right it become very dark and uh i don't know but i feel like i still remember uh, suddenly uh, my father when he turned off the right uh it's a completely dark and my father said to us that you cannot say anything during the meditation so it's a deadly silent and completely dark and I feel, how can I say, uh, fear, fear of darkness. I feel some kind of fear of darkness. Oh, it's completely dark. No, no more uh, uh, saying I can hear what I should do. And my father keeps said to me, 20 minute meditation and, and just the blessing in and out. Do not have any thinking, you know, something like that. Uh, so I hate uh, at the very uh, first time, I hate to do that. But uh, after three, third or fourth time, I start to enjoy it. Because during the 20 minutes, a completely dark and no more thing, I was uh, for the first time enjoying that moment. Because in the normal state, we are busy at responding to outside uh, stimulation, you know, something nice scenery, a beautiful sound and music and television and radio. We are a slave of our sensation. We follow all kinds of uh, sensations. But this time, I still remember for the first time <laughs> when I was thinking, sitting there uh, completely dark together with my family, I was thinking, you know, if the world uh, is going to end, what should, what should I do? You know, can I uh, still be with my family? <laughs> Something like that. You know, that kind of thinking, uh, you know, continue uh, without interruption from outside, you know. So I feel, uh, <laughs> oh, this is very nice. <laughs> somehow I enjoy, somehow I enjoy uh, during that moment. So, uh, you know, that's the overcome of fear of darkness. And then we can have a discussive thought and fine thinking. Discussive thought and fine thinking. Uh, in Buddhism, uh, in the special uh, word, uh, it was called the Bitaka and Bijara, or in Chinese, Shim and Sa. And discussive thought uh, means 
you know, during the meditation, we are thinking. Uh, for example, uh, when I drink a lot, drink a lot, uh, you know, with my friend, and going back home, uh, my ma my mother, my my wife usually said, uh, you know, when I uh, arrived there, <laughs> my wife usually said to me that, why you drink so much? <laughs> so I usually uh, answer back to my wife that this is my business. You know, I have to meet uh, friends and and colleagues, and we should talk. Uh, in order to have a talk, we should drink. <laughs> and then my wife said, uh, no more drink. And, and I said to her that uh, I will try less drink, something like that. So uh, when I going back to my home, uh, when I was in taxi, I usually think, why my wife said this, I will say this. And she said this, I will say this. So thinking according to a kind of a discussion between the two. So that's the uh, discussive thought. So if you are doing uh, that kind of thinking in very deep, without interruption from your sensation, you can enter into the meditation if you keep continue, if you keep continue. Or pain thinking. Pain thinking is a reasoning. So for example, uh, you know, why uh, human beings uh, born again and again and again. And then uh, we thought, ah, uh, because we were born, we are getting old and die. So getting old and die caused by our birth. Why we become birth? Because of our uh, uh, action in the past. Because of our action in the past. Why we did uh, ac action in the past? Because our because of our past, uh, you know, endless desire, our past, uh, you know, uh, attachment and our past department. So in this way, uh, we can have a pine thinking on the cause and result. Uh, you know, we can we can deep thinking inside there. Yeah? That was the uh, pine thinking. Uh, so pitaka and bichara. So if that thinking keep continue, you know without interrupted by any outside stimulation, you are entering into the meditation. Uh, and then uh, we have a joy and happiness. So a student, my student said, to me, how we become uh, very happy uh, during the meditation? I don't like, you know, meditative experience, you know, uh, it's painful and I didn't enjoy, but uh, you know, I have a nice experience of extreme happiness uh, after the meditation. Uh, you know, uh, I was at the Oxford University, uh, and uh, uh, when I entered there, I feel like I should do yoga. Because I belong to Southeast, South Asian studies, and uh, South Asian studies, uh, you know, people usually do a meditation and yoga and, and Sanskrit and Hare Krishna movement and, and so on. But uh, the yoga, uh, I feel like uh, I should do it because uh, in Dongguk University, I belong to Indian philosophy department. So we have some attachment to do yoga. So uh, during that time uh, in Oxford University, uh, we have a very famous Hatha, Hatha Yoga student club. Uh, student club. Uh, so every, I think, Thursday, uh, afternoon, uh, 7 or 8 o'clock, we all meet together in a very big room uh, like this, <laughs> big room. Uh, and we do practice yoga for one hour and we all going back. So when I uh, go there, uh, there are a yellow strip and blue strip and a red strip and all sorts of strips. So a kind of rope. Uh, so why why there are so many ropes? I didn't realize that. that. But uh, when our uh, yoga teacher appeared, and he used that strip to uh, binding my, my, my hands, or sometimes binding my legs, and then uh, we do stretch, you know. 
in order to do have a yoga, we can stretch our head, something like that, and our legs going up and so on. So in normal uh, way, we cannot do it. So with the strip, we can help them uh, to do, you know, ex you know, stretches, extreme position, something like that, with something like that. So uh, uh, our our yoga session uh, during the forty minute. Uh, we all stretch each other <laughs> to have a, have a, uh, you know a kind of a yoga posture we can make it so during the 40 minutes we just stretching 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 i can help them you know <laughs> to have something so during the 40 minutes we actually torture our body torture our body so the, all the muscles we are not using it during the 40 minutes they are all extended so after the 40 minutes and, and, and when I finish it, when I go back home, I feel pain on all of my body, all my joint, I can feel pain. So it's very painful for me uh, during uh, one or two months. And uh, I talk about my yoga experience to my supervisor, uh, Richard Gombrich. Uh, he's a very renowned Pali scholar. And my, student, my teacher said to me, uh, Mr. Huang, if you want to have a, a, a PhD, you should give up yoga. <laughs> Doing yoga uh, didn't help, uh, cannot help you uh, finish your uh, study. Uh, you should uh, depend on knowledge, not uh, uh, you know torturing your body, something like that. But I carry on. I carry on this hatha yoga for six months, mainly because. It's very painful uh, for 40 minutes or 50 minutes. But after the torturing our body uh, for a long time, uh, our teacher, uh, he was uh, a professor in biology department. He asked us, everyone lying down like that. We all lying down on the floor <laughs> like this. We all lying down. <laughs> And then, uh, just like my father, uh, our teacher uh, suddenly turned off the light, turned off the light. So it become completely dark. We can only hear uh, the sound of breathing in and out of all other people. But uh, I feel uh, very happy. I feel some kind of a bodily happiness I can get it because during the time uh, my body was tortured. And then I was just uh, uh, lying down, and I feel like there is no more, no more torture. My torture finished. <laughs> and then all my muscles released, and I feel really relaxed. <laughs> and then during the 10 or 15 minutes, uh, our teacher said, breathing in and breathing out, <laughs> breathing in and breathing out. Suddenly I enjoy, I enjoy that feeling of calm, calmness feeling of releasing of all the pain and so on. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know how, how I enjoy it. So that's the joy and happiness. Joy and happiness. We can have a joy from circulation, uh, you know, not uh, with uh, many other people. Uh, we are alone. We can feel joy, you know. And also our body uh, become very happy. Uh, so, so that's the uh, first meditation. I'm not sure uh, how to enter there, but uh, I haven't got uh, this kind of deep meditative experience, but Buddhism usually said that's the first meditation. Uh, during the first meditation, if you are actually concentrated on just the one thing, uh, con content, concentration on the one uh, point, if you are really concentrated on just the one point, uh, you know, uh, your discursive thought and fine thinking disappear. So if you are concentrated on just the one point, uh, you are entering into a more deep meditation. That was called the second meditation. So in this second meditation, no more thinking and no more thought. So you only have a joy and happiness uh, joy from your concentration and the bodily happiness you can get it 
So uh, that's the uh, second meditation. Uh, if I may put it here. <laughs> Concentration on, on the one point. And then uh, from the second meditation, if you uh, you can uh, step by step realize uh, feeling of joy cannot last forever. So feeling of joy step by step disappear. So when feeling of joy step by step disappear, you are reaching the state where you only have happiness. Usually, we usually call it bodily happiness. Bodily happiness. Uh, bodily happiness. We only have a bodily happiness. Uh, from there, uh, you feel bodily happiness. Also, it's a kind of feeling, you know. So if you uh, calm down your mind, no more a stimulation from your body. Your mind uh, is more like a plant. So uh, bodily happiness uh, also feeling. <laughs> so it just uh, disappear. So uh, from there, you are enter entering into the post meditation. So this post meditation uh, in Buddhism, uh, we usually say that people enter into the upeka. Upeka, upeka, equanimity, equanimity, equanimity. Uh, so uh, this post meditation, if you are reaching at upeka, uh, this is just like uh, you know yesterday. Uh, no, no. When Monday, I said to you that. Uh, in Buddhism, the mind we are achieving during the meditation is totally sealed. Uh, no more wind. So this, there is no more wave. Uh, it's totally still uh, lake, uh, you remember. Uh, uh, that's the post-meditation. Uh, that's post-meditation. So, so this post-meditation, as you can see, is a one by one, step by step. It's a kind of a gradual pro process. So with the gradual process, we remove all our mental states, mental state. One by one, we just remove our mental state, uh, aiming at reaching upeka, equanimity, uh, all equal, uh, according to every feelings. And then from uh, the, the uh, post meditation, we enter into the fifth uh, sphere of uh, endless space, uh, <laughs> and then we are entering into the endless consciousness. So, uh, you know, uh, people, uh, when they, uh, how can I say, accept it as a ritual, uh, they thought Buddhist monk, when they meditate, they are going up to, going up to the space, <laughs> something like that. So even today, if you go to India, there are some yogi who claim that if he uh, really concentrate on his body is going up, <laughs> you know, something like that. Uh, they usually said, but uh, that's uh, uh, kind of uh, not easy uh, experience. I have to say, uh, you know, almost impossible. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, meditation, uh, Buddhist meditation, uh, when we are doing it uh, uh, with very deep, uh, we are reaching into the altered state of consciousness. consciousness. How, how can I say? Altered. Altered. Altered state of consciousness, which means something we can see, uh, but cannot be the, uh, the result of our, how can I say? Uh, direct uh, sensation. Uh, for example, uh, I have one friend. I have one friend uh, who do the meditation, vipassana meditation, uh, in Myanmar, uh, very very seriously. So when he was sitting there, do the vipassana meditation in uh, Yangon, 
it's a southern uh, city of uh, uh, how can I say uh, uh, Myanmar. And uh, uh, he said to me one day he did his meditation very good, uh, excellent, doing something very nice, <laughs> you know. Uh, so uh, one day he thought uh, his meditation is at its high, and then uh, while he was, he closed his eye, uh, he did the meditation. He felt mosquito, <laughs> mosquito just flying uh, surrounding him. Uh, he can hear, and, and and he opened his eye and he saw the mosquito. <laughs> and then this mosquito, not sitting on the front side of his body, uh, he was just sitting on the back side of his body, back side of his body. And then you know mosquito when they uh, sit sitting there. And they they uh, soak the blood, and uh, while he was uh, deep in the meditation, uh, he can actually saw mosquito or sitting his back and uh, soaking the blood. He can actually saw. So uh, you know this is the one he can see while he was just sitting, but without using his uh, you know eye, you know uh, you know uh, visual. Uh, uh, faculty, he can see something uh, happening behind uh, at the result of altered state of consciousness. Uh, altered. So with the altered state of consciousness, when we are into the very deep, we will have an experience to going up to the space. So uh, going up to the space, uh, we feel like, oh, this space is infinite, you know, endless there. And, and, and then uh, realize endless space is the equal in the endless consciousness. You know, we can imagine endless uh, uh, space uh, in the universe, uh, but it, we can also uh, imagine inside of our head, <laughs> you know. Uh, our eye uh, can see here, but our mind can imagine even bigger. <laughs> so we realize endless consciousness uh, from there. And then uh, all become nothing, uh, you know, according to the explanation. It's a, it's a sphere of nothingness. And then we are into this uh, neither concept or non-concept. It's a kind of a twilight, twilight state. Uh, have you seen the uh, Japanese movie? Uh, what was that? Uh, Kimi no namae wa. Kimi no nawa, namae wa. Uh, <laughs> uh, in that movie, you can see the lady who can... Uh, go back to the, uh, you know, uh, no, no, go to the future, uh, something like that. Uh, and then uh, he met a man, uh, they constantly to see each other, but they cannot. But, uh, you know, uh, when the sun was going down, just the before or after, that's the moment of a twilight zone. <laughs> when they enter the twilight zone, they uh, can talk each other, but uh, it's, it sounds like dream, so they cannot remember when they uh, wake up. So they try to write down the name on their, uh, you know, uh, body and uh, try to remember, but uh, not easy. So Kimi no Namae wa, very nice movie, uh, Japanese movie. Anyway, uh, that twilight moment, uh, the moment of our consciousness and the moment of a complete stop, uh, that's the neither conception nor non-conception. Bi sang, bi bi sang cho. We call it in Korea. So from there, uh, we are entering into complete cessation. It's a niroda sama pati. Niroda sama pati. Completion of a cessation of all our mental activity. So with this meditation, we have this. mystical experience so according to the theory with with when we enter into this mystic moment all our uh, attachment and department uh, they all go out <laughs> so once we enter there uh, in this mystical experience niroda samapati all our mental activity stop and we cannot say uh, what was happening there, but miraculous, miraculously, 
all our attachment, all our department disappear. So when we uh, wake up uh, uh, from uh, that uh, moment, we say, I become ara, Arahat. Arahat means uh, respect, respectable uh, respectable person because he remove all his internal desire and so on so this is a moment of uh, this is a moment of awakening awaken this is the moment of awakening in buddhism so i just briefly explain uh, the uh, nine successive meditation so this is a, a systematized version of a systematized uh, meditation uh, in the middle uh, Indian Buddhist tradition. Uh, in the middle period of Indian Buddhism, this uh, nine gradual step uh, meditation become a kind of a standard, a, a kind of a stand, uh, systematized form to explain how to remove your uh, old, uh, you know, uh, attachment and desire. But uh, as you can see here, this is not coherent. Uh, this post meditation to the post meditation, very clear. Uh, aiming at removing our mental activities and suddenly we have a sphere of infinite space, infinite consciousness, nothingness and neither conception nor non-conception. Very strange. And then we have a, a completion of a cessation, a Niroda Samapati at the top. Uh, but when we check the early Buddhism, uh, when the Buddha achieved awakening, uh, it was not in Niroda Samapati, but in post meditation. The Buddha achieved the Buddha's awakening occur uh, at the post meditation. And also, when we check, uh, you know, uh, Mahapari Nibbana Sutta, Buddha at the entering into nirvana, uh, where there is no more rebirth, he achieved the, the post meditation, not in the Niroda Samapati. So, uh, feel like uh, these upper uh, five things <laughs> totally useless because the Buddha achieved everything here, not at the top. So, why this kind of things happening in Buddhism? Uh, we when we checked it, uh, nowadays we concluded that. This is outside influence, outside influence. You know, Buddhism is kind of a religion uh, practiced uh, during the time when uh, there are many uh, different type of meditation, meditation traditions. Uh, there are many different meditation traditions. Buddhism centered on knowledge, not the meditation. Buddhism wants to have a state where they can use their knowledge correctly. Buddhism never aiming at achieving some kind of infinite meditative state. But meditation for Buddhism is a, a secondary kind of, a, how, can I, how can I say, kind of, kind of aiding uh, job, not the, uh, you know, uh, final uh, outcome. So uh, when we checked it, this uh, fifth and sixth infinite space and infinite consciousness, uh, when we checked it, it belongs to Jainism. Jains, according to their their books, they did the practice of infinite space, uh, you know, meditation. They also do a meditation on infinite consciousness. Uh, both of them uh, may be from Jain influence entering into the Buddhist, uh, you know, world, and uh, uh, the the above two. Uh, the uh, uh, spear of nothingness, uh, when we check the early canon, this one, the Buddha learned from his former teacher. Uh, the Buddha uh, had uh, two former teachers, uh, Allah Lama and Upaka Ramaputta. Uh, 
uh, uh, here is the name Alaraka Lama and Upaka uh, Utaka Uttaka Ramaputta. Uh, so uh, here, <laughs> you know, the Buddha learned uh, you know meditation technique from his two former teachers. And according to the early canon, uh, he learned a uh, spear of nothingness from Alara Kalama. And neither conception nor non conception uh, from Utaka Lama Buddha. Rama Buddha. And uh, we are not sure exactly what kind of uh, meditation tradition they belong. Uh, but uh, we usually say they are from ashram, ashram tradition. Maybe Hindu, maybe Vedic. Uh, we are not sure. Uh, maybe uh, yeah, you know Vedic ashram tradition. Maybe Hindu, uh, uh, the same ashram tradition. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, the story of Buddhism uh, teaches us that both of them cannot be the original meditation used uh, by Buddha when he became awakened. Uh, both of them outside the influence. And Niruddha Samapati is <laughs> a giant meditation. <laughs> because giants are trying to stop no more activity on their, their body. And eventually, uh, no more activity in their body, leading to no more activity in their uh, sensation. So when giants really enter into the, uh, you know, asceticism together with the meditation, they cannot hear, they cannot see, they cannot smell, they cannot taste. You know, they are completely uh, stopped uh, from their acti mental activity as well as uh, physical activities. So this one in Buddhism, instead of uh, uh, continuing on our physical activities, but we make it very minute, almost nothing, but we try stop our mental activity in order to reach this mystical experience. So uh, as you can see here, this nine successive meditation is outcome of the influence of uh, uh, you know meditation uh, tradition during the time of the Buddha entering into the Buddhism. So uh, if you want to see more about this, uh, I recommend uh, your Johannes Bronkhorst. Uh, uh, Bronkhorst. He is a Dutch uh, Buddhist scholar, uh, study uh, Jain and Buddhist meditation. And he wrote a book, The Two Traditions of Meditation in India. In India. And he claimed that during the time of the Buddhism, Buddhism focus more on knowledge, not the meditation itself. So uh, when Buddhism become grow, uh, many foreign influence in uh, entering into the Buddhism, and uh, Buddhist meditation never be the mainstream. So mainstream meditation tradition in India, uh, Jainism uh, in, in Sankhya is is based on Hush Hush asceticism, and the aim of the meditation to achieving a kind of a meditative, a mystical state. So that influence entering into the Buddhism, uh, Buddhism accepted. Uh, the result, uh, nine successive meditation. Uh, so uh, in your handout, uh, I put it here, way of asceticism, uh, I explained there, and I said it's more like a Jainism, <laughs> more like a Jainism. Uh, and it cannot be uh, the real uh, Buddhist one. So uh, next week uh, I will explain a uh, way of wisdom. Way of wisdom. Uh, this is very important because nowadays uh, this method, way of wisdom, uh, uh, we call it as a vipassana, uh, accepted it open-heartedly by certain Buddhists. So uh, nowadays uh, vipassana become very popular, uh, not only among Southeast Asia but also among. Uh, uh, many European countries, 
South Korea as well, uh, there are many monks in the Jen temple where they practice not the Jen, uh, you know, uh, par uh, what uh, observing paradoxical question meditation, Ganhasan, they do a vipassana. <laughs> and I, I also did some vipassana with my teacher uh, when I was in, in Thailand. So uh, I will explain uh, uh, how we become free from our uh, desire our attachment and our uh, department uh, using this second one, a way of wisdom, uh, next Monday. Uh, okay, thank you very much, and I will, I will see you uh, next week. Uh.